Hello and God bless you all. Welcome back to Daily Bread and Water where we read one scripture a day because just as we need bread and food and water for our daily lives to survive in our physical bodies or we want to spend some time in the Word of God with the bread of life and that living water of the Holy Spirit that will help us in our spiritual life because just like Jesus said when he's tempted in the wilderness man cannot live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God so for all those of us who hunger and thirst after righteousness this is why we're here to hear God's word so we can get blessed and if you have any want to comment about this scripture what you what it says to you leave in the comments below if you'd like to step if you'd like to suggest a scripture that we cover in a future daily bread and water episode let us know in the comments and if you would like to have like a video chat or audio chat where we just discuss the scripture of the, the day let me know in the comments email me My email address you can get it in the description I mean in the, uh, in the about section and today as I was thinking trying to think about what the Lord wanted me to bring out I was listening to a couple people and they were talking about scripture that was kind of a defining in their faith you know it, a scripture that you know meant something to the first one was this Jewish man and I, if I mention his name you probably know who he was maybe he wouldn't I don't know but you know he was talking about when he became the same knowledge of Jesus Christ he wasn't reading the New Testament he was reading Isaiah and and Jeremiah when he came to this realization that Jesus is his Messiah and the other person is a gentleman who, um, who lives in Australia and he was talking about how a year ago he was having this struggle where he felt like he wasn't hearing from God anymore like he felt like God would have abandoned him and he was praying to God saying Lord I just don't feel like I don't feel you anymore I don't feel you talking to me and I just you show me that you're still there that you're still with me and he was taking a walk and he's seen one of those plastic chairs you probably all seen them at Walmart you probably all seen them in people's yard those plastic chairs where the arm comes out of the back and meets in the front of the legs those, just those little plastic chairs you know the white ones and things this one was white they showed a picture of but uh, I'm sure you all know those plastic chairs so anyway like you see them at Walmart and like I said in people's yards and whatnot they're they're good for like because you know they're, they're plastic they won't rust and things like that in the weather so you can put them on your porch on your deck you know whatever it may be leave them out there outside to sit on to enjoy a beautiful day so anyway they were talking about this these, and whenever he took that walk he that chair had written on it that he saw when he was walking had the, his favorite song was written on this chair and like I said I mean he can tell the story better than I can because it's his testimony but as I was listening to both of these and I was listening to the, my friend from Australia telling that story you know I just started thinking okay that's awesome and then I started thinking well, what what is like a verse that is like close to me that you know like a defining moment for me and I just started thinking about all these verses that I love and I'm like that's not like a defining thing and I think the enemy was trying to take the verse from me but God revealed it to me he said you know David you remember that verse that you st stood your ground on and there's this verse right here Isaiah 53 5 but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquity the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed 
And this right here, the last verse, and with his stripes we are healed. This is what I stood on. You see, if you ever listen to my sermons I do on Sundays, I've talked about before several times about how I was, when I was 13 years old, I got saved and baptized. And before that, you know, other times I, I ran to the altar numerous times. But when I was 13, I got saved and baptized. And, you know, I believed, who, I believed in my mind and said with my mouth that I believed in Jesus. I believed he was the Son of God. I believed he died for my sins. I believe he was my Savior. But he wasn't living in my heart. You know, I still did what I wanted to do. And for 20 years, I confessed that I loved him. He never heard from me except for whenever I had some stupid prayer where I'm like, God, if you will do this now, I will never ask you for another thing, ever. Stupid prayers like that or, or just whenever some catastrophe would happen, someone's in the hospital or, you know, whatever it may be, that's the only time God would hear from me. And 20 years of playing games with him, I got hit with this dizzy spell. First, it was on a Friday. I was dizzy. Just I became dizzy, and I was dizzy the rest of the day, the rest of the evening. Woke up the next day fine. Then it was again the next day. I mean, uh, the next week on a Tuesday, on a uh, Thursday, excuse me. Went from a Friday on one week, then a Thursday on the next. And I was got dizzy, and after that, I was, you know, the next day I was perfectly fine. Then it come up the following Sunday and I was dizzy and this time I was dizzy on every day I was either dizzy or I had a headache that felt like there was a bicycle pump hooked up to my brain just continually pumping my brain like it was going to burst from every hole in my head out of my ears eyes nose everything you know and each and every day when I was either sick I mean, with a dizzy, or I was sick with this headache. The people, my family kept telling me, David, go to the doctor, go to the doctor, go to the doctor. I stood on this scripture right here, Isaiah 53 5. And I said, Lord, in your word, it says, by your stripes we are healed. Not we were. It's saying we are healed. Jesus paid our, he paid for our healing with those stripes he got on his back because it got hit 39 times but this whip hat was split into several strands of leather from three to nine two, I don't know how many but so you're thinking hitting 39 times and that's multiplying 39 plus either times either three or nine you know the flavor and the talk about how it has three three straps at the end of it and some people call it the cat nine tails which may be nine straps I don't know but you know he's getting hit with these at least three three strips of metal or um, with leather with metal on them or bone or glass or something that's gonna that because what it did was when it hit Jesus it would rip that flesh from him it wasn't just wasn't with marks like king of kings where it's just just lines on his back. I mean, this was hitting and it was tearing flesh from his body. And, it, and he bore that for our sickness, for our healing. So that's why it says, by his stripes we are healed. He already paid for it. It might be, it's not a, it might be, it could be, it says we are healed. Some people say that it's a, a spiritual healing. Maybe it is. But I know for me, I was believing on a physical healing. I had this dizziness and I dealt with it for two weeks straight. The second week on a Thursday I went to get the local newspaper at a, at a store probably no more than four to six blocks away. And I'm walking, I get two doors down and I decide to go back home because I'm just so dizzy. I, I, I'm like I know I'm walking like I've been drinking all day and that. And I thought if I continue to go, I may fall because I'm so dizzy. And the people would go, look at that drunk. He's just sitting he's just sitting there laying in that ditch, you know, so laying there at the side of the road. So 
I decided to go back home. And then the second Sunday, because this went from a Sunday to a Sunday, and then to another Sunday. So it was two, two complete weeks. And that second Sunday, I'm there at Sunday school, sitting there in the, at the front. There's a kid way at the back, shaking keys. You're in Sunday school, a little baby. And it felt like that kid was shaking the keys two inches from my ear. And then between Sunday school and church, the praise team was up there kind of playing their instruments. Not, not loud or anything, but to me it sounded like a garage band of teenagers who said, hey, let's make a band and just play instruments that don't make, and making any music at all, just make a noise. So after church, I went to the altar and I said, Lord, I've been leaning on your word that by your stripes I am healed. And I'm, I'm losing this fight. I don't know how to, I'm not strong enough. Lord, if I, if I have to deal with this again tomorrow, I'm going to, I have, I'm going to have to give in and go to the hospital. I can't, I don't know how to fight it any longer. So, up comes that Monday, perfectly fine. And then I say, okay, Lord. I've been doing, and I don't, even, I, mean, I don't even know how I said this or anything, or even if I said that day or whatever, but there just a realization came over me that, all right, I need to get serious. I need to stop putting Jesus on the back burner and doing what David wants. I need to make him the Lord of my life. I need to make, I need to make him first before everything. Not caring about what everybody else may think. Put Jesus first. And that's what I've done from that day. And I started getting into his word every day and went from just feeling like I need to do it to now it's a love. It's a love to be in his word. I love to get in his word because every single time I read it, I guess I'm the new of it. But this scripture right here was a defining scripture for me. And I'm sorry if I went too long with this video. But please, in the comment section, the section below, tell us some scriptures that were defining moments for you. Put in the description if you'd like to suggest a scripture to be used in, the, in a future video. If you would like to have a video chat or audio chat with me where we discuss a future scripture, we can do that as well. But we just want to continue in God's Word each and every day as we see that day go close. Because, look, I tell you, so, folks, we will not be here much longer. We truly won't be. And I'll tell you something that's really interesting. Maybe it'll get you excited, maybe it'll scare you, I don't know. We know, we know that in the tribulation, the Jews are going to think they had their Messiah, right? Because they rejected Jesus. They didn't see him for who he was. They, they're waiting on their Messiah now. They believe that their Messiah will bring peace to them, right? They believe that the Messiah will be there when they sacrifice that tenth red heifer. And they have five of them right now. And from the time that Moses built the first built the tabernacle originally in the wilderness, all the way to the destruction of the second temple in seventy AD. From that time, that entire time frame from Moses put up that put up the tabernacle the very first time to 70 AD, there were only nine biblically accurate red heifers that were worthy of being sacrificed. Only nine have been sacrificed for the entire time. And now, now the tenth one is the one that will be sacrificed in the tribulation temple, in the last, in the third temple. And this is the one that, they, that the Jews believe the Messiah will be there when that 
tenth red heifer to sacrifice. Now, I don't know if you've heard this, but that's been happening for a while, for a few years now, where it says, where they, they keep talking about the top rabbis have been having discussions with the Messiah. Now there's this one guy, 33 years old young man, knows the entire Old Testament, or at least the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, knows them all by heart, could quote them word for word. This guy is 33 years old, rabbis that are older than him are coming up to him and kissing him. And now he's healing people, y'all. This guy is healing people now. He's doing miracles. We ain't got much time. Jesus is coming soon. And if knowing that the the Jewish Messiah, their Jewish Messiah, this anti Messiah, this Antichrist. Now I'm not saying he is Antichrist, I'm not saying at all. He could be the Antichrist, he could be the false prophet, he could just be somebody that is good in the word, I don't know. If you know, he could he could be he could be the false prophet. He could be the Antichrist, he could just be some guy, I don't know. But he, they say he's doing miracles now. And you've got to really search to find when he's doing his miracles. It's almost like it's almost like Jesus and uh, when he started his ministry. Now, I'm not comparing this guy to Jesus. No, all I'm saying is when Jesus was first doing his miracles in there, he was doing them privately. Like you remember when he killed the, the leper, he says, he says, don't tell anybody. Just go to the temple. And show yourself to the priest and give the gift that Moses said to give for your cleansing. He didn't say, go tell everybody how great I am. Nothing like that. So he, he had his book. So he, his, his ministry was kind of uh, intimate and private. And then he did an open ministry, openly, you know, was doing miracles and, you know, he had his public ministry then. Are we seeing this with this guy? I don't know. But Jesus is coming soon. So if you don't know him, just believe in the gospel. Know that we all mess up. There ain't none of us that are perfect. We all sin. The Bible says that no, there's none of the righteous, no, not a one. The wages of sin is death, which means that sin separates us from God. And that separation, punishment is death. Because we're separated from God and that's, that sin, because God, God and sin can't dwell together. So that sin separates us from Him. And that sin is the death penalty. But Jesus paid for that sin with His sacrifice on the cross. Just like it says here, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By our stripes we were all healed. Jesus paid for it. Yes. He paid for everything. Anything that we go through. Jesus paid for it on that cross. Because he was a real person. He was in the spirit. He was really born of a virgin. He really lived a sinless life. He was really perfect in every way. He wasn't somebody that cursed people for cutting them off in traffic. And of course, they didn't have that back then. But you know, but he was perfect in every way. He was the perfect willing sacrifice to pay our sins, and only he could, because no one else can do it. Because if anyone else can do it. You mean you might as well have the neighbor down the road die for your sin. Jesus was perfect. He was the one who was willing. He was the one that was able to pay your sins. So believe 
They meant that through a sinner believed in Jesus who he was, that he was the Son of God. He was truly God and truly man. That he really did die for you. He was buried. He died, was buried, and rose again. And God raised him from the dead. Call out to God. It says if we call out to him, confess with your mouth. It says if we confess with our mouth, he is faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So that's all you got to do. Just trust in Jesus with your heart. Like I said, not with your lips. Because you can fool people. You can fool your pastor in church. You can fool me. You can fool your neighbors, whoever. But you're not going to fool God. So if you if you, if, if you feel God calling to you, if you see what's going on in the world, and then you don't have to, like I said, I say this all the time in my sermons. You don't have to watch the news. You don't have to be a Bible scholar. You can just go out in your daily lives and you'll see this world is getting crazier. This world is getting darker. And if that's curious, you don't know what to do. Call out to Jesus. And you got to do it with every part of your being. Your whole heart, soul, mind. You know, just you can't just Say with your lips, I believe you, Jesus. And not mean it in your heart. Trust me, I played that game. I played that game. It's not a game to be... It's, a, it's not a fun game. And I'm just lucky that Jesus looked at me and said, I love him even though he's played games with me. I still love him enough. And I want to call him back to me. I still love him enough that even when I was in Gethsemane and I was pressed down like an like an olive. Have you ever seen the olive press things? There's the Expedition Bible that I gave the link for the whenever they were doing the sheep. Jesus the Soul Shepherd. There's also Jesus, the uh, all oppressed, beautiful story, powerful to know. Jesus was sat there and his sweat was his drops of blood, thinking about us. And then he went and he faced all that brutalness. Like I said, if, if you watch Passion of Christ, it's not nowhere near as brutal as it was in reality. But just, you can watch that and just know that Jesus did that for you. And, you know, he didn't have to face that. He could have said, he could have looked at me and said, David's not worthy, Father, take me home. But he did. He went, he faced it. And he gave me this free gift. There's this gift for each and every one of you. Each and every one of you listen to me. He doesn't know Jesus. There's this, this free present. The best present you'll ever get. You know, a lot of people just want to like to live in the now. But one day this life will be over. And we're giving you the best presents you can get. That will guarantee that the next life will be way better than this one will ever be. More beautiful. More amazing. And all you got to do is just take that present. Just say, give me that present, Jesus. That's what I want. Just take that present from him. He's handing that present out to you. It's all wrapped in the beautifulest packaging you could ever think of. Just reach out and grab it. Anyway, I love you. God bless y'all. Hope y'all have a great day. Can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I'm kind of thinking about a scripture I want to use. But the Lord may change my mind. And if y'all want, if y'all want to suggest something, like I said, leave in the comments. And y'all want to have a discussion in the video. Someone wants to, you know, we'll get like a Zoom call going on or call on the phone and record the audio and whatever you want to do and we can, you know, have a video that way where we just talk about a scripture. Whatever scripture you all want or, you know, whatever it may be. Anyway, I love y'all. God bless you. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. And don't forget, we also will be having our sermon on Sunday and we will be continuing our 
series that we kind of that God kind of led me to do about how much Jesus loves us. We our first video was about how Jesus loves us, and we were using the parable of the hundred sheep and the one streak that went astray. And then last week we were doing the parable of the prodigal son. This week will be just as beautiful. So join us for that. Join us for our daily bread videos. We're going to keep doing it until Jesus comes or, or God takes me home. Whichever way it comes first. If, if we're still here until I'm 65, I'll be doing this until I'm 65. If Jesus takes us home, well, we'll keep doing it until then. And maybe somebody in the tribulation period will come across his videos and be blessed. Anyway, I love y'all. God bless y'all. I hope y'all have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. God willing.